Why is it that some people still think that the earth is flat? Is sugar a poison? Is there a safe way to take marijuana? What is the difference then between breathing in marijuana smoke and breathing in like the smoke that comes from incense sticks, which is more credible? Mm. A bush that is on fire that never burns or beings that come from in and out of, of our atmosphere. No deacon, pastor, priest, imam, rabbi has ever said, ask me anything. I'm based in Birmingham in the UK and uh, I'm currently uh, studying um, the Wu Sabbat uh, doctrine and uh, our way of, um, our way of uh, doing things, our culture, and uh, I do have, um, since I've been studying, I have quite a few uh, questions. The more I read is the more questions that I have. So I'm hoping to get uh, some answers to some of these questions and hopefully they're questions that other people would also like the answers to. Hey, Rahul Bhatt, um, I'm Sakin. I'm one of the student teachers of the Master Teacher and um, we do our best to try and answer questions that anyone may have regarding Wu Sabat. Um, you know, we say, ask us anything. It's actually a pleasure to meet somebody else who is a, a fellow Nuwapian, Sabian. Um, how, how long have you been a, um, a Sabian or a Nuwapian? Like when, how did you first get in, into, well, the, into the um... culture? I first, what it was, I visited uh, a friend of mine that I've known for a number of years, over 30 years. Mm -hmm. And um, I went to his house and I think I went there to um, repair a computer of his because my background is computing. Mm. And um, he just happened to be playing a, a, one of the True Light tapes, I think it was. And um, I said, and I heard the master teacher speaking and uh, he turned it off and I went, no, 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 don't turn it off. You know, keep playing, keep it. playing it. Yeah, yeah and, um, and I said, who's this, who's this guy? Do you know, where's he come from? And, and then he explained to me. And I says, well, why didn't you tell me about this before? And he said, he thought that I would laugh at him. Oh, okay. That's the reason why he, he didn't tell me. And I says, no, this is really interesting, you know. And I says, have you got any more tapes or anything like that. And he borrowed me a tape and I went back to him and I said, have you got any more? Yeah. And that's how I got into it. And that, that was, um, wow. That's around, it's more than 15 years ago. Oh, wow. So yeah, yeah cause that was uh, actually gonna be my, my next question in terms yeah, of yeah. Um, how long ago was that? 15 years ago? Yeah, mm -hmm. it was, it was, a, it, it was about maybe a bit more than that, but you know, um, I sort of got caught up with, you know, they, you know, living and I sort of came out of the, you know, out of the doctrine for a while. Well, yeah. not necessarily came out, but I would just sort of occupied myself with other things. Mm. And then I realised that, you know, uh, that um, I still wasn't getting the fulfilment that I felt I needed. Right. And, um, and I think uh, I went online and... Uh, I heard something about, for those brothers who are outside, come back, right. you know, mm -hmm. and so I thought, you know what, I need to get back into, you know, and... Yeah. Uh, so, and, so mm -hmm. in terms of, um, why did he think you would laugh at him? What was it about what he, he was playing you, why he thought you would laugh? Um, before, and then before you go into the, the questions you have, it's interesting that people that are worldwide may not understand that even though we're in the UK, um, you know, I'm in London and you're in Birmingham, you're Brummie as we would say. Yeah. <laughs> and um, the distance between, you know, London and Birmingham and the other cities, because I think people that are not familiar with the UK might think, you know, we're, we're just all in kind of closer proximity. So if you could just, yeah, tell us a bit about how Birmingham is and before that, just what was it about what he was playing, why he thought you would laugh at him? Um, I can understand why he said it, because I'm the type of person who will take the mickey out of you. Yeah. If I see an opportunity, I'll jump on it. Yeah. And um, it wasn't like nasty kind of, 
you know, in that kind of way. But if I saw an opportunity, I'd be on it. Right. And, uh, you know, a, a lot of the time, he didn't have an answer for what I was saying, you know, and, uh, you know, it was never meant in malice or anything like that. Right. But he honestly thought that if he mentioned that to me, that I'd just really go to town on him. I know you're saying mention mm. that. I'm trying to get what the, that is. Um, basically, when he, he, he mentioned something... And I think the first, it was the first time I'd actually heard the, the word Anunnaki. Okay. And I says, well, what's that? Right. And right. then he went on to explain what that was. And I says, well, really? And then I wanted to know more. Right. You, you know, and yeah. it, it, just, it just went on from there. And it was like, um, I think uh, there, there was a movie. I, I can't remember the name of the movie, but there was this robot. Um, that kept saying, more input, more input, more input, more input. <laughs> and right. I was like that. It was yeah. like, it wasn't enough. The, and I was, the more you got, yeah, the more you wanted. The more, yeah, and it was like that. And it's, you know, what about, oh, there's books and scrolls and things like that. And I started buying those. Right. And uh, that's how I sort of became engaged in, in, in the doctrine. And how was it received in, in Birmingham? Um, it varies. It varies. And... Um, I mean, I've done um, some um, propagating, going out onto the streets, and and most of the time, it's it's fine. Mm. You do get the occasional person that you know is very, um, you know, who opposes it, you know, uh, mm. and um, you know will say derogatory things and so mm. on and so forth. But on the whole, mm. people are just curious. The the fact that we're we're standing there, you know, like similar to, to the garb you're wearing. Yeah. People, are, when they see that, they sort of like, well, why are you wearing that? Mm. You know, it's sort of that sort of thing, yeah. you know. So um, there, there, there's not as many um, members in, in the Midlands area, as we call it, because we're far away from the sea where I live. Right. Um, I think the nearest we are to the sea is about two hours. And uh, from where uh, I am in Birmingham to where we are here mm. is a, is a, about a three hour journey. Right. If you know to give people an idea of the, the distance. Yeah. Um, I think by American term standards, actually three hours isn't that far, but to mm. us it is. Right. You know, it's a mission. Yeah. yeah. You know, so um, traffic and all that. Yeah. 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 So um, that's. Um, you know, I, I was a bit disappointed because it, it seems that at first mm. that people were really spent more time criticising the doctrine rather than, you know, asking questions because of things that were out there and that mm -hmm. the media put out and other people and, and it was kind of frustrating. So I felt that's why um, there wasn't so much of a, of a take up as there is in, in London. But it seems now recently more and more people, especially with these um, classes and, and conversations yeah. that, that people can see um, uh, from our point of view. And the thing is, um, people have never really heard anyone, and we are not a, a, a religion, as is, has been said many times, no Deacon, pastor, priest, imam, rabbi has ever said, ask me anything. Mm. Okay, that's a good note to get into your questions. Mm. So yeah, go ahead. Mm. Let's let's get into yeah, these questions. I do have, I do have uh, <laughs> some questions here no as problem. I've been going through. Right, um, let's, let's get to them. Right. Um, is there a safe way to take marijuana? Of course, um, marijuana, just like any natural herb, can be taken safely in um, in in a tea. You know, um, just taking it in its natural form. Um, what we teach is that smoking is bad for you. That's regardless of what you're smoking. Um, so, taking marijuana and then adding tobacco and then adding paper and then ingesting that into your lungs in the form of smoke, that is not something that we advocate or we recommend for anybody to do. So yes, you can get now, obviously CB, um, what do they call them? Um, CBDs 
have become popular and are even used for medicinal purposes. So yes, there are safe ways and um, a natural way of taking marijuana, which is known by many names, of course, but um, yeah, but to, to smoke it is something that, yeah, we do not, we do not recommend, but yes, there are safe ways as I've just outlined. Okay, um, sort of going along that same um, line. Yeah. What is the difference then between uh, breathing in marijuana smoke and breathing in like the smoke that comes from incense sticks, for for example? Right. What's the difference? Um, Incidentally, this marijuana question keeps coming up because we know that um, a lot of people do struggle having become it having become habitual or they become a habit that they've been maybe doing for a very long time, and it becomes um, it's an intoxicant when you're smoking in that way, and when you have when you become addicted to something, it's a lot harder for you to kind of like wean off it. So. People who struggle with giving it up will always ask these types of questions like, or try to justify, you know, partaking in smoking it. Of course, um, natural nature, which is becoming harder and harder to, to, to find, especially in cities where, you know, there's a lot of pollution and so on. So the air we're breathing at the moment, especially in, in like I said, in cities and places where a lot of... Um, cars and fumes are, are, you know, are in the air. It's harder to breathe clean air. So in that sense, um, when you're saying taking in incense smoke, again, that's not something you're supposed, you're not meant to be burning incense so that you can inhale it and take it in. It's just supposed to help clear the environment. It's like um, having an air freshener. Of course, the air fresheners, you know, they have um, chemicals and things that are bad for you. So but ultimately, yeah, incense is not really for you to burn, to, to, to take it mm. in a smoke. So that kind of, in terms of your question, it's not the same as we've taken in the smoke of marijuana. All of the passive smoking, that's what you're really referring to, because mm. you could be just walking down the street and somebody else is smoking yeah. and even vaping now. And people think that just because the vapes, they have a scent and they smell nice, that, oh, all of a sudden it's okay mm. and it's not damaging to you. But what you're re not realizing is that there are tiny, tiny particles in all the air that you're breathing in terms of how polluted it is, whether it's from cigarette smoke, vapes, incense, dick burning, marijuana, or whatever. So you have to, yeah, you have to really struggle to, to breathe clean air. And this is why we recommend that you should spend time in nature, you know, go to the, to the parks, go into the, the woods, the forest where there's going to be cleaner oxygen, which is coming out from the, the plant life, the plantation, and um, away from, you know, like the cities, from the, you know, the carbon. There's a lot of, a lot of metals in the air, even the chemtrails that you see, there's a lot of um, ions and metals in there. So it's a very good question. You should really practice breathing exercises. We have a, a, a book by the master teacher called The Breath, which um, teaches you how to you know, breathe properly for a start. Most people don't even breathe properly because they haven't been taught how. You're meant to breathe through your nose and out your mouth. But most of us have been trained in that way, so we just breathe in and out through our, mm. our nose a lot of the times. And the whole point of air and breathing is supposed to prolong your life because there's actually energy or source in the breath, referred to as the sakan. Um, or well, some people might say chi, but even within, you know, the molecules, that's where you get that, that pure energy. And some people practice becoming a breathitarian, which is just living off of air. But of course, that's, that's because they understand that you can define your life as the total number of breaths that you take. So if you only had, let's say, 5,000 breaths, mm -hmm. then... On the, on the last one, it's going to be the end of your life. So right. it's very important to learn to breathe properly. There are different types of breathing exercises, um, and it's about taking the cleanest air into your lungs as much as possible, um, because obviously then that, that helps to fuel the burning. What we call the burning is the fact that you have a solar plexus, 
And, and when I said that the breaths you take are what are keeping you alive is because you're breathing in um, oxygen and then when you breathe out, you're giving out carbon dioxide. So that shows you that it's fuel because you're burning something right. and mm -hmm. then you're giving off the residue. Mm -hmm. Carbon mm -hmm. is the residue mm -hmm. of burning. So therefore, it's like when you're driving a car, you put the fuel into the car and the combustion and, you know, they, they yeah. use that in, and then they give out the, through the exhaust. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with you as a vehicle. Um, and as a vehicle, your body is known as a, a khatat and then um, your, your spirit is known as a ka'a, right? It sounds like car in English mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you are the person driving your body or you're in the driving seat of your being. And then your soul is referred to in our language as a ba'a or ba, as some people say. So in ancient Egypt or what people call Kemet, you see the ka, the ba, and these are referring. And then the, um, the etheric you is known as the ach ach, right, which is the etheric you. So you're composed of different beings, but to fuel that energy, you take in. This is why relig the religious world would say your body is a temple. And in a temple, you will normally have an altar, mm -hmm. an altar where you burn things. So the, your solar plexus, and it's like the altar in your temple, which is your body. And the fuel is the things you put into yourself. That, that's air, that's food. Because when you eat foods, what you're also doing is, really, you're supposed to break down the solids by chewing it. And eventually, with the acids in your stomach, it actually turns that into liquid. And these liquids um, are burnt through the acid in your blood. This is why it's literally like your temple with an altar where you put in like, let's say, people that eat meat, you're putting that onto the altar and it burns that. And then it, it, it takes a longer process in terms of meat to go through the digestive process. Yeah. But yeah, so not to kind of um, stray too much away from your question, anything that you're taking in, it should be something that is as much natural nature as possible and that's what your your body's designed for so that you yourself again we we as um, nagarus even though we're melanated the color you see us today is is not our natural color and colored is dependent on the environment that you're in so when you look at the walls of egypt for example you may see like osiris and certain beings that have got a, a, the green color or topaz mm -hmm. And this is because in the natural environment they're from, so for example, the planet Risk has three suns, which will be d different to being here where you only have one sun. Mm -hmm. So um, being green is really the most natural way. That's why the trees, the vegetation and everything is green. And because of the, you know, the ionization of our body, we have actually rusted because, you know, the plants there have chlorophyll and it's, it's green. So because of the... So we basically oxidized then. Yes, exactly. Yeah. 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 So I'm just saying yeah. that to say when you start to look at air and breathing and the purpose of it, it's not really for you to be taken in on natural, on natural sources mm -hmm. into your lungs. Because yeah, that mm -hmm. goes against you, in other words. Yeah. Okay. okay. I hope that's answered that question. Yeah, yeah, it certainly has. Uh, right. This is the last one on the same subject. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Um, I didn't get on with uh, marijuana when I was younger. I tried it, yeah. and it just made me sick. I just, it, I didn't get on with it at all. Yeah. And uh, since then, over the years, you know, I've asked various people, why do you smoke marijuana? And the most common answer that I get is, well, they give me inspiration and thing, you know. And I, I knew you was going to say that yeah. because I've heard... Yeah, but yeah, that's what yeah, they say. Go ahead. But one person mm -hmm. said something that I'd never heard before. Okay. And I asked him, well, why do you smell, you know, ganja? They know it's ganja. Yeah. Um, I said, why, why do you smell ganja? And he says, well, I smoke it because it grew on Solomon's grave. Mm. So my question is, did marijuana grow on Solomon's grave? Well, if it did, I, I don't know, because um, this is one of those... I would say, tells that goes around and it spreads, isn't it? It's like religion, it's like certain things people will say, but just based on what he's saying to you, mm -hmm. it's obviously clear that that's hearsay. Yeah, because would you say he, it's like a myth or something? Yeah, because yeah. he wasn't there, he didn't mm -hmm. see it, so somebody mm -hmm. must have passed mm -hmm. that on. Mm -hmm. um, 
But e even if it did, what relevance does that have in terms of just because it grew there, then what that means? You should smoke it. You should smoke it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like mm. we, we'll sub out deals with sound right reasoning. Like people will make excuses and justify things that either they don't know or they don't have any facts or they're ignorant to the facts or they just, it's hearsay and they, they just follow it. Um, but the thing is, if you start to ask questions like, is it good for your health? You know, like mm. one of the things I hear a lot is, uh, it makes me meditate, I'm holding the meds. But mm. they don't understand why that's the case. What do you mean holding the meds? Well, they, meds is like a meditation. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's because of the reaction of the chem or the chemical reaction that takes place once you're smoking. Because what it's doing is, is that it's affecting the part of your brain, right? Um, in, in the hippocampus region of the brain, which deals with hallucinations mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it makes you feel good. And, and that's because, you know, as higher supreme beings, we had something called a barathry gland that was removed and surgically removed. And so um, people from time to time will get inspiration or will get what people call inspiration mm. or flashbacks or when they're in a particular state of mind, they're able to tap into those higher realms at random. Not like they can't do it every time they want to, mm. consistently. It's like, so when they do, when they relax, and you can do this through, you know, just meditation without the smoking, you could just relax yourself and tap into those higher mm. realms with your mind that will give you that feeling. But the thing is, when you induce it with whether it's psychedelic drugs, alcohol, marijuana, as you said, or mm. ganja, or any of the terms that they, they, they use, um, it's self-induced, so they, it gives you that good feeling, but it never lasts, because when you're on that high, it eventually wears off and comes down, and then you still have to face reality. So it's either you're going to be constantly in a state where you're trying to escape this world and the responsibilities and the... Uh, you know, the things that you may not like in this world. So you constantly have to be sedated, intoxicated, whether it's, like I said, with whatever vice, um, just to just to not having to deal with reality and deal with real life. Because if you can get the same natural high, why would you have to induce it? It's just like women who can have birth naturally, they don't have to be induced to bring the baby out, mm. you see, because... That's uh, it's not the natural way to go about doing it. So, regardless of whether it was or wasn't, I wasn't at Solomon's grave. Um, I, I don't. There's no. I don't know what the evidence is to prove that. But regardless whether he was or whether it was or wasn't growing there, that's no excuse to be smoking it. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Thank you for that answer. No problem. This. Um. On to um another um question, mm -hmm. a different subject. Um, there's a lot of um, talk and debate about sugar. Mm. And uh, most of us know um, now mm. that, um, you know, there are or can be issues with sugar. Mm. Uh, my question is, um, is sugar a poison? Because somebody described it to me yes. as a poison. Yes, absolutely. However, um, there are different forms of sugar. Or really, what people are talking about is sweeteners. However, um, you know, there's like white sugar, brown sugar, there's sugar from sugar cane, honey. Um, so what it is, is that the synthetic sugars are, yeah, they are bad for you, they're a drug. In fact, most people are addicted to sugar. Um, because you're, you're trained from a very young age to like sweet things. Um, and even the master teacher, Pana Bab Yanun, Dr. Malakai Zee York, also explained to us, he said, the first thing to do to eradicate it, the problems you have is to st st stop eating sugar. Stop eating sugar. Yeah. And then somebody asked, and he said, and the second thing is, stop, stop eating, eating sugar. sugar. <laughs> because it's one of those drugs that, most people are addicted to and they don't know that they are. 
because it's been normalized from the time you were growing up. If you think about how much sugar people t intake, because in the morning, for example, if you grow up in the West, you may have cereal and have sugar in the cereal with a cup of tea with sugar. And then you might, when you go to work, you'll have tea breaks and you'll have sugar. And every time you're having a cup of tea or a coffee or whatever, you'll put in two or three sugars, um, teaspoons of sugar into the, into the drink. You do that, let's say you have six uh, teas in a day and now multiply that by a week, a month, a year, you see how much sugar we're taking in that one is synthetic because most white stuff like white sugar is, it's like the goodness has been removed to make it, um, it's like white rice, white sugar, white flour, white bread. It's almost like the natural nutrients have been bleached out and what's left over is what you're now taking in. So the best thing to do is to try and replace the sugar with fruits, with, with honey, you know, natural honey. Because even with the honeys now, most of the honeys you get in the supermarkets, they're laced with sugar. So good high quality honey is a replacement or algarve or, like I said, fruits. Um, and you know people are addicted to sugar because when you give them something that is bitter, they go, Ugh, mm, like, mm. I can't, they can't take it. So... You know, those of us who grew up with our parents giving us bitters and things like that, you get used to it so you don't feel that effect of, Ugh. and when you give children, because candies, chocolates, sweets, you know, they just recently had the Halloween celebrating um, the devil's birthday. <laughs> That's a whole different story. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, but that whole thing, trick-or-treating, um, it's like, Children are trained to go out and beg for sweets. But sweets are bad for you because they contain so much sugar mm -hmm. that rotten your teeth and your gums. So why would you encourage that? So yes, definitely sugar is a drug, like is salt. Mm -hmm. So the two things, salt and sugar, is in everything. And so mm -hmm. yeah, it is a poison that you should try to eradicate or get the alternatives that are much more healthy for you. Okay. Um, these questions are not in any particular order. That's fine. Um, I was speaking to a sister a while ago, and to cut a long story short, just before I left um, her place, she said something that absolutely blew my socks off mm. and just stopped me in my tracks. What did my, she qu say? my question is yeah. why is it that some people still think that the earth is flat? That's what she told me. Yeah. Um, so is that the, the question? The question, why is it yeah. that, that people, people think that Earth is flat? Yeah, that's, that's because of media, mass media. And, you know, it's, it, there's always going to be controversy in the sense that if somebody says something is up, you're going to find people are going to say, no, it's down. If you say it's left, someone's going to say, no, it's right. And this is done to persuade people to follow something without proof or evidence, right? We, we, what's about? We, we, we go on about facts and evidence. And for, for us, knowing that we have a teacher, a master teacher, that explained to us that he comes from somewhere called Planet Risk, right? In the 19th galaxy known as Ilion. And at first, this might sound like crazy to people, and like, how do you know? How can you prove it? And because of that, for a Sabian or Noapian to say that the earth was flat. And this is another thing as well. I always try to clarify what people mean when they say the earth is flat. Because with facts and knowledge and reasoning, okay, if you say the earth is flat, this surface to me is flat. Okay, let me finish and then you can come in, right? This is flat. So first of all, the part of the planet that we're calling Earth, not the water part, mm -hmm. Earth, has mountains, so it's not flat, right? Just on a basic, simple mm -hmm. level, the Earth is not flat because you have regions that are up and those that are down, and then some of the land goes into the waters, deep into the oceans. So you, you're more seeing this kind of thing, and the land mass is it's only the bits that you're seeing coming out of the water. Mm -hmm. So if we're defining what 
earth is, the, the, the ground, it is not flat. Mm. That's a fact. Secondly, they then say it has a dome, right? So there's a flat surface and then there's a dome. A dome is something that is cylinder, right? It's like mm -hmm. it's got a curve. Mm -hmm. So that's not flat either. So then I ask, okay, if, if it's flat and there's a dome on top, what about the bottom? Is there a dome on the bottom mm. as well? Or is it just a flat surface with a dome? And I've seen depictions and images of people um, saying that they show you like, it's like, you know, those, those little toys you used to get where, you know, you have like snow and they've got a little mm -hmm. dome and mm -hmm. like, they say that's what it's like. And when I mention about the master teacher, Pana Babianun, who is to, the most intelligent person I've ever come across on the planet right now, um, and the information he has taught has reasoned out and proved itself on every subject you can possibly think of above the sun and below the sun. And if somebody is that intelligent and has given so much information, facts after facts after facts have come to pass and there's literature and documentation in the books to prove this, he has never taught that the earth is flat. That will actually go against the fact that he's coming from somewhere else which is outside of the planet, from the planet risk. So just reasoning, for me, that doesn't make sense. So what it is, is that people will get into groups and they will believe something and then they get other people to believe them and they all now belong to this club that pushes this idea, ideology that it's flat. But then you start to say things like, the same people that talk about the earth being flat some of them are religious because they will talk about God or Allah or do you know what I mean? Like, and then you say to them, well, where is this person? They will say it's in heaven or somewhere else. Unless they dispute that completely, then it doesn't make sense because then the same person they're calling a deity, God, Allah, etc., they say is not here, mm. is in heaven. An another unconfirmed place or somewhere else outside of it where we know that when you read the text, the words that are used are describing outside of the planet, as in the constellations, you know. With, um, if you look at quotes like um, Job 9.9, Amos 5.8, um, there are many quotes that talk about Pleiades, Arcturus, Orion, Sirius, and this is all in the book. And these are constellations that you can look into the, to the sky and see. So, and there are satellites, people use mobile phones. So, yeah, so I, I don't know. They only follow it because it's mass media and people. It's just like a religion. You know, there's a group of people that get together and they, they believe in something and they convince other people to believe it. And if you don't believe it, then you're not part of that club or that group. And so that's the same thing with this flat earth um, movement that people have. That's my answer anyway. Yeah, um, you know, just going back to something that you raised and um, with regards to that, I was actually trying to understand or overstand where she was coming from. So I asked her, mm. do you mean flat like a pancake? Mm. And she said, yes. So um, I said, well, if the earth's flat like a pancake, yeah. then why don't you fall off the edge? And she said that there's a mountainous region that goes all the way around the edge that's uh, snow, what we call Antarctica. Ice cap. Uh, some ice, ice walls yeah, and that, yeah. And nobody can go beyond it mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. And I just needed to find out where she was coming from and actually did a bit of research. And as you rightly said, there are actual whole societies out there, mm. what they call the flat earthers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if that's what they want to subscribe to, then that's up to them. But mm. it just really surprised me because this... Uh, this person that I know, I can't. I can't look at her the same. Yeah, I, I mean it's a belief system, and yeah. like you said, in terms of the the ice walls, um, there are parts where you get to in the Antarctica that people are not allowed to go further. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But to, for people to say nobody's been beyond there, mm -hmm. how do you know mm -hmm. if you've never been beyond there? Mm -hmm. What we do know, as taught to us by Parnabab Yanon, is that you have many entrances to the caverns inside the earth, mm -hmm. um, 
which there's a place known as Shambhala. Shambhala actually translates as um, centered by Allah. And that there are many extraterrestrial beings that have been here, some of them even before humanoid forms, in, in the, the sense of our humanoid forms. And these entrances lead into these caverns where many extraterrestrials have inhabited for many, many years. Um, some of those are like um, the Teros, the Deros, the, um, the Duanis, the Danakil, the Flugorods, um, so many different species. And, and that people have even ventured into this subterranean world. Admiral Byrd, for example, yeah, who was a... Uh, he was an army, he was, he was flying a plane and he, he, he lost his way and went into the caverns. There are many entrances, some of them are like, you know, where the pyramids of Giza are, in South America, in different parts, and Antarctica as well. So, and, and many people see crafts come and go into the seas and go into the subterranean world. And so, obviously, some of these extraterrestrials have made pacts, agreements, and treaties with world governments to remain um, anonymous, and and they coexist and live. Mm. So they're guarded. These entrances are guarded, and certain um, walls or you know what I mean blockages are there to prevent people going. Because obviously, if people were to really and it's starting to happen anyway. Many people are sighting extraterrestrials. Many people are sighting crafts going into the water, coming out of the water. Um, and so, yes, if it's been, if a lid has been kept under it for so many years, and recently, you know, disclosure and certain things are starting to talk about, they call them um, UAPs, mm -hmm. unidentified aerial ph phenomenon. And, mm -hmm. and um, before it was UFOs, unidentified flying objects. People have seen many types of beings. Oh, Sasquatch this is another one, which is known as Bigfoot. People have seen, mm -hmm. um, you know, there are many, many, many incidences around the world, globally, by different cultures, different people, talking about these things now. So, yes, that is one explanation of people not being allowed to go beyond mm. certain places. Even um, Hitler was obviously very active in the Antarctica, as mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. he was in contact with beings known as Pleiadians, um, and he was, he was in contact with a witch called Madame Blavatsky, who was a channeler that was able to channel um, and speak to these extraterrestrials. So it's a very well-known fact that these things exist. However, it's also a very well-known fact that um, it's been made to seem that if you talk about these things, that you're crazy. If you talk about, they mm. call them aliens. Mm. Oh, you you know, you must be losing your mind. Mm. And as time has gone on, it's become more and more um, available to the public. See, the whole religious and... Because remember, as a religion, you have, you're made to believe something. And if you were to know that what you've been believing all your life... Um, it's not God, but these extraterrestrials and these aliens, they will lose control on a lot of people because that fear of being burnt and going to mm -hmm. hell and you know being punished by this being um, will go away, you see. So for some people, it's in their interest to keep that fear going, to keep this conspiracy going, to make you act like you're crazy and to get people to believe. Um, even natural nature doesn't grow in a flat way mm. you know mm. you, we stand up right you know what i mean it's like why are we not flat mm. like mm. like pancakes then mm. Every, everything grows upwards and outwards it doesn't go down um so that whole concept of everything being flat doesn't really make sense nature when you look at the uh, fibonacci um way that things grow they come out and they grow and they spiral out and constantly yeah. expand and they have curves not straight lines um, if you imagine having a girlfriend or a woman, would you like her to have some curves or would you just want her to be straight and flat? <laughs> I'll put you on the spot. <laughs> curves, right? So natural nature shows us, look, a tree grows and it's curves. It's got, mm -hmm. you know, because if, if it wasn't designed to have the curves, the wind coming will be hitting against mm -hmm. it and, and way natural nature, well, it, it wouldn't make sense. So everything in nature also points to things not being flat like that. So that's my take on it. 
Yeah, I'd just like to pick up on something that, that you said. Um, sure. You know, you, you have, especially, but not exclusively, yeah. um, religiously minded people who say, well, uh, those Sabians, those uh, Nawapians, they believe in spaceships and aliens. And, you, and these are the same people that say that a man spoke to a burning bush and it spoke back. Mm. That's fine. <laughs> you know, yeah, you'd exactly. have to ask the question, which is more credible? Mm. A bush that is on fire that never burns or beings that come from in and out of, of our atmosphere? Well, but it's funny because even in their own texts and their own books, like you say, they say, this is what we ask them, is this God, deity, Allah, whatever, is he seen or unseen? Is he everywhere or in one place? Is he everywhere and nowhere at the same time? Is he a light? Is he a person? Is he a woman? Is he a she? Because when you're using sound right reasoning and you start asking these questions, it does literally become a joke because they will tell you in one um, section that he can't be seen. And then in another section, you're saying he's seen as a burning bush. And then you say, is this burning bush something that burns forever? Because if you're burning, burning is the consumption you need of something fuel to exactly and to oxygen. burn, and then yeah. it will burn yeah. out. So, mm -hmm. it, how what type of fire is this? Because fire consumes and it needs oxygen to consume whatever it's consuming. Uh, that's just one. Then they will say he's in heaven, and you say, "Where is heaven?" They will say up there. You say up there where they don't know, and then you say, "Is that in the sky? Is that in the constellations? Is that in the galaxies? That universe?" And they don't know. But they will just say it's there. And if you start going through the books from the beginning to the end, you're going to meet snakes that talk. You're going to find out about um, unicorns. You're going to, there's so many things you're going to come across that they can't prove that exist. And when you start to question their God, question their deity, the fact that one minute he's, seen the next minute you know no one's supposed to see him but then i can give you quotes where he's walking he's talking he's jealous he's having emotions he's angry he's he's wiping people off of the face he's causing floods he's he's doing things and then the next minute they say he's all loving and then mm -hmm. you say why did he create mm. the devil they say no he didn't create the devil because the devil was once an angel and then you're like well who gave the angel the ability to think to be evil or to give him the power to become evil because they say God created everything mm. and he created the angels. And they say God can make the angels. Some angels are just good, right? Which they say mm. are seraphims, mm. right? Or, or cherubims. And then others are bad. Mm. So there's good and bad angels. Mm -hmm. They can only be one or the other. Mm -hmm. But then in Islam, for example, they will say Iblis, which means he rebelled. He went against something that Allah told him to do. Well, how can he have the power to do that? Because they say he was asked to bow down to the new creation of Adam and he refused. Right, how? And if God can snap his finger and change things, corn fire corn or let it be and it is, why don't he just do that and get rid of evil on the planet? See, what it is, is Hollywood. It's these Pleiadians that gave you religion and they made themselves the gods and made people fear them and made people believe this belief system and it just got remixed and remixed and remixed over the years. When you talk about the Pleiadians, who do you mean? Because some people might not know. Oh, right. So, so the, that's a species of extraterrestrials, that the ones I was mentioning that met with Hitler. Mm -hmm. Their blonde hair, blue eyes. Um, their, their, their leader is called Ashtar, or there's an Ashtar command. Um, and um, they literally were responsible for the gravitation of um, the Adamites, yeah, who look like them. This is why in the biblical writings they will say, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And then you say, well, that must be a specific species of people because if we're all made in the image and the likeness of the same being, why are we different complexions, different colours, different hair textures, different blood types? So, you know, it doesn't make sense. So it's actually talking about a specific group of people, these Pleiadians, who are blonde hair, blue eyes, and they were 
making or grafting or creating a being to look like them, just like other beings on the planet who also have their origins from their ancestors, you know. So you have the, ma the major races on the planet all tying back to these beings. And I mentioned earlier mm. on that some of these beings came here and they settled in the, in the world under the seas, in the, in the caverns. Some are still in the skies, but they can camouflage themselves. Mm -hmm. And so in the caverns, these beings, like I said, the Teros, those are the ones that have the cone head. Mm -hmm. they, they come from Jomon, and this is tying into like the, the Chinese and the Asian, the Orientals. Then you have the Natharu, or their descendants became known as the Dunakil. That's our ancestors, and they're like us. They look like us. They're brown and have woolly hair. Um, then you will have, you know, like the Asians, um, like the Hindus, they will have their own, those beings as well, who came from Nirvana, and they, they all then mixed in with each other, produce offspring. Some of those have come onto the surface of the planet and mixed with humans, mm -hmm. produce more hybrids. So there are so many different beings and species on this planet, both in the seas, on the land, in the air, and above in terms of the different mm. constellations and so forth. And they come and go and they pass themselves off to different cultures. You know, like you can go to the Mayans, the Zoastics, the Chinese, as I said, the Hindus, the Egyptians, the um, Sumerians, um, the Dogons. You know, you can go to many, many cultures, the Yoruba, and mm. they will all have stories telling you about their ancestors and where they came from and what they taught them. And you will find out that most of them all go back to mm. extraterrestrials. Yeah, yeah, that, that's an interesting um, answer there. Okay. Um, this sort of um, ties in with the um, because I always used to wonder how is it that Hitler used to um, endorse the idea of a blonde-haired, blue-eyed Aryan race as. Mm. as you know, why would he do that when he was neither? He, he didn't have blonde hair and he didn't have blue eyes. Exactly. Why did he do that? So there was a specific reason for him doing that. Yeah. Uh, would you be able to, to explain as to why Hitler actually did this? What was the reason for it? Yeah, because as I said, these beings, the um, Pleiadians, they, they look like that and, and they passed themselves off to him as mm. being gods. And remember that they had technology and they were able to do certain things that to him was so advanced. They gave him technology to, to, build, um, to build some of the crafts that till this day people are trying to reverse engineer. And so to him, they were gods and they used him. This is why during the wars, the World War I and II, he was actually trying to take over the world. And he was almost able to because of the technology and the assistance that he was receiving I think from. the V2 rocket was That's one right, of those. exactly. Yeah. The hovercraft and certain mm -hmm. technology that was given mm -hmm. to him. And so he looked at them and saw them as, as the gods. And he went about creating the supreme race, that, as he thought, the Aryan race. And so he was trying to create them to look like, like him, like these beings. And that's why... Obviously, a lot of people know about um, the Jesse Owens incident in the Olympics where he had brought one of these beings that he thought he had created. And obviously, Jesse Owens in the race just left him behind. Mm -hmm. So he was like, well, if you're that supreme, how come this Negroid who was looked down on and mm -hmm. till this day, a lot of us because of religion and because of these dumbing down in terms of belief systems, we're not tapping into who we really are. And, and we're still not recognising that, you know, the whole religious thing. And the thing about it as well, um, Hitler being a Nazi, for example, as I, I, I was mentioning to someone the other day, that, you know, he was rallying at the, um, the Madison Square Garden for his, when he was obviously you know, as a not the Nazi party, and you know, I, I saw the similarities recently with with you know Donald Trump doing the same mm. thing, and um, actually saying that, yeah, Donald's kind of looking like a a blonde hair, blue eyes type of being himself, mm. isn't he? Mm. So mm. this is quite an interesting coincidence. But if it is a coincidence, 
But yeah, that's why he went about doing that because he thought that, um, you know, he thought they were gods. They passed themselves off to him as being gods. And um, obviously, like, if you have technology, like things that no one's ever seen before, uh, if, you were, if you were to go to a remote village somewhere really deep in the Amazons or in Africa or somewhere and you came with, you know, an iPhone, a mobile phone and you could show them YouTube and, you know, things they've never seen before, they'll be like, and then you say to them, I'm God, um, worship me, you know, create something in my image and my likeness. Mm. And especially if I'm going to solve your problems for you, like I'll help you win the war or I'll give you technology that will help you defeat your enemies and things like that. So yeah, that's why. Um, you sort of reminded me of, of, um, of an episode of Tarzan that uh, I saw many years ago back in the 70s, where there was a man that went out into the jungle. Yeah. And there were rumours that there was this god in the jungle but. And fire came from his hands. But to cut a long story short, he was considered a god by the local tribes of people. Yeah. But it turns out that he just had two oxygen tanks <laughs> on his back. Yes. And he was terrorising people, saying that he's a god and he was, yeah. you know, and he ended up actually setting himself on fire in the end. Right. You know, it's sort of, so I can see how, you know, obviously if people aren't used to seeing something like that, then I can see why Hitler would see these people as as gods, yeah. uh, as those people in the movie saw That's this brother. Right. Just and like, yeah. um, you know, in The Wizard of Oz, everybody thought that the actual Wizard of Oz was some great, su you know, exactly. supreme being. Yeah. And then it turns out when the dog pulls back the curtain, it's just some geezer, so, you know. Exactly. With all, this is you know, what's happening. Mm. They're pulling the wool over people's eyes and um, passing themselves off to be you know, you know, these beings and like you can see the charis the characters of them are like normal humans because like God saying, have no other one but me, like I'm a jealous God, that's just showing you that's a hum that's human emotions. Like how can you be jealous of your own creation? Like what is what do they have for you to be jealous of if you are the one that, you know, created everything and everyone and like why do you need to be jealous? And that's because they, they, they're different. This is where you get words like Elohim, um, cherubim, seraphim, and you will always find the good and bad, God, the devil, and they have to be opposites because if not, you being a person who has those emotions, you can relate to that, mm. you see? So mm. it's almost like, well, I can understand why when everything is good, it's God that does it. When everything is bad, the it's the it. devil that does it. But you know, it's the two natures, the polarity between the two, and you're the one in the middle where you can decide. This is where that whole thing about free will doesn't make sense either, because they will say you have free will, which was given to you by this God, this creator, but then you can only use it in the way he says you can use it, because if you don't, then hell. there are consequences, you're going to hell. It's like, what kind of choice mm -hmm. is that? Mm -hmm. That's no choice, multiple choices, mm -hmm. no choice. Yeah. Yeah. Choice mas mas no choice masquerading as choice. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. I have another question. Please, right. You you said in one of the um, previous uh, um, classes online just recently, the last few weeks. Yeah. That um, our our objective as as humans is to go back to or to raise ourselves mm -hmm. to um to see to the supreme beings right. that we once were mm -hmm. and we have the opportunity to come back to this planet over and over and over again mm. until we perfect ourselves so that we don't have to come back here mm -hmm. and that we can go to the next realm right. and perfect ourselves there so that we can go to the next realm so sure. that we never have to come back. Now, if I remember correctly, um, you said that we can come back up to 24,000 times, mm -hmm. which sounds like an enormous amount of chances, you know. Mm. Uh, my question is, would there have been anyone that's done it first time and not have had to come back? 23,999 times. <laughs> right, excellent question. The thing is, you have to remember that everything is levels, right? 
people who don't agree to that, if you look at the way the world is run, there's always like, even in a company, you'll have like a CEO or, you know what I mean, the, 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 the president or whatever, and then you come back down, you've got the management, then you'll have the workers, and then you'll have the laymen, right? The government is the same. You'll have a prime minister or a president, a king, or some type of head figure. So that shows you that there are levels. Now, when we're talking about these levels, we're talking about different realms, right? So a simple way of explaining it is that the lowest level, the lowest in terms of vibration and frequency is what we call the physical or the material plane, where things are more dense and harder. And things in terms of vibration and frequencies, they all coexist in the same um, in the same space, but at different vibrations. So that is to say that you may be looking at a table or something as solid, but when you break it down, it's held together by atoms. And eventually, if you were to zoom in and zoom in and zoom in into those atoms, it will become like literally everything is just held together with energy. So when we're saying these realms, we're talking about you've got nine ether, right? Or nine levels to make it simple. Level one would be the physical or the material plane. Then you have other levels above in terms of vibration and frequency. Now, that's in terms of physical things, objects, uh, as well as the planet itself. So what it is, is that there are beings that exist and live in different dimensions. So you have dimensions and you have... Um, galaxies or intergalactical travel. So you can travel interdimensionally. What that mean by that is, for example, if you could walk through that wall, right, that's, you're going from one dimension to another. Um, there's like stargates that open and lead to different mm. places and so forth. Intergalactically is when you're, you're, you're like say, traveling in a craft from one galaxy to another. Okay, so there's a combination and a mixture of when we're saying the traveling. Now, you yourself are composed of many aspects. So you have your physical body, the things that the one you can touch and see, yeah. but you're also made up of atoms that as you go into them, you get to a point where there are atoms or things that exist beyond hydrogen, right? Which was recorded as the first element coming into the physical world. When you start to go in the other direction into the etheric world, you have E1, E2, E3, and so mm -hmm. on to, mm -hmm. to say E9. The reason I keep saying nine is because nine will be like nine to the ninth power of nine because you can't get any higher than mm -hmm. that in terms of numbers, in terms of ethers, in terms of everything when you're trying to calculate it using the physical mind. So yes, you as a being, the physical body is like a skin suit, which is made up of the elements of the environment which you're in. And you need that for locomotion. So to move my hand and to carry things and to walk in this environment, I need a body. However, when people cross over or pass on, which people refer to as being dead or death, all they're doing is they're shedding their physical skin suit and now have another suit, which is the spiritual you. So you have a spiritual body, you have a, a mental body, you have an etheric body. So in terms of coming back and transcending the different levels, so the nine ether will be the highest. Not everyone can attain being nine, just as not everyone can start off working in a company as, not to be derogatory to anybody who's a cleaner but, um, or a janitor, it's like you can start off at the bottom and work your way up to being the CEO or even the owner, right? But not everyone can do that. Some people can. And so when it comes to you as a being, there are these levels that you have to attain the same way you come into this physical world and you have to attain or get the healthy body to come here and be able to move. Because if you came here and you were disabled or handicapped, um, if I'm using those, I don't want to offend anybody, po politically correct terms, but if there was something wrong with you physically and you couldn't walk or you couldn't see, or you, you know, then you're going to be impaired in some way. So when you're being born into the other worlds, the etheric worlds and the spiritual world, you also have to be a healthy being. So you're not born prematurely. Like in this world, you can be born prematurely. If, for example, your mother was 
uh, the mother of the child was taking in intoxicants, mm -hmm. was smoking, was taking crack or alcohol or these things, or just being in the wrong environment that can affect the child. So when the child comes into this world, they may not be the best um, optimum health they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. When you're being born into the etheric world, you also have had to amass or generate enough energy, for lack of a better word, that will carry you to the next. Mm -hmm. So you can have an existence in that world. And when you don't, then you can come back again through wormholes or portals, which is that energy part of you comes back again and it comes back through the next parents that you're going to come through. And the reason is because you, you, you're getting another chance to come back and fulfill what you didn't do to amass that energy to help you move on to the next realm. So you'll come back and you learn another lesson and you go through that life and you keep getting these chances. And you were right, it's 24 times to 24,000 times. Mm -hmm. That's the amount of times mm -hmm. you have to mm -hmm. correct and perfect your being. Mm -hmm. This is why, even in religion, it's all about you, you're being tested, as they put it, to do good so that you can go to heaven or to perfect your being so that, you know, you can be allowed into that community of beings that are supposedly in that place called heaven. But in this instance, it's about you going into the next level and eventually, if you do keep climbing, then you go back to what, in English, the easiest way to ex explain that is called all, A-double-L, mm. right? Because all is all, and you can only say all is in English. In our language, that's, that's part, part all, because it's obviously English is limiting in terms mm -hmm. of when you're trying to explain certain things, because it's really a dialect made up of words from different dialects or different languages mm -hmm. so sometimes we can't express in english what we're trying to convey from you know say our language but pa pa ut means the all expanding and um so every thing is a part of all you see so mm -hmm. this is what's happening you're coming back over and over again so you can learn to perfect yourself so you can move on to the higher realms and uh, fortunately if after 24,000 times <laughs> 24 cha wow. 24,000 chances, chances, you wow. still haven't got it, then you dissipate, mm -hmm. which basically mm -hmm. means that because energy can't be destroyed, so you're, you're not able to have the opportunity to transcend these realms and have different experiences mm -hmm. in these other realms, which will be as real to you as this one is here with people you know, your family and people that are on those realms as well. See, sometimes people do visit these realms in what they call their dream state or they will get visions or they will have an experience which they will call a dream. And then when they wake up, they're like, I went to this place, I saw these mm. people, I did this and I did that. Not all dreams are that because some dreams are just things from your subconscious mind, things you've watched on TV, you know, books you've read, stories you've, you know, maybe have been told since you were a young person. So it all depends. I mean, this is why Wu Sabat is here to teach you the right knowledge, right wisdom, right understanding that leads to sound right reasoning. So when you come across a situation or when you're speaking to people or you have an experience, you're able to now, instead of people thinking you're crazy or you're mad or, you know, you're able to now reason it out to a point where it makes sense, where you will know for sure this experience was me receiving a vision or this experience is just crap that I have to purge out of my subconscious mm. that I've been storing that it's just taking up space it could be a horror movie or some type of trauma or something that you've been through so there are differences and this is why Wu Sabat by way of partner Babianun the master teacher Dr Malachi Z York he's able to teach us about the world where he comes from these are the worlds, these are the beings, these are the extraterrestrials, where people are, because he's also a channeler and he can channel, um, not possess, because people try to say, oh, mm -hmm. he's possessed. No, he's able to, not any, when you're possessed is when you're not in control. Any entity or someone can just possess you and take control of your vessel. This is why things like meditation and the things, practices, spiritual practices, um, help you to know when you're, traversing these realms and these places 
that you know who's good for you, who means you well, who's bad for you, who might trick you uh, and possess your body if you leave your, your physical body and then not able to get back in. Another entity can get in and then you're a different person. And people are yeah. like, what's wrong with him? He's changed. He never used to be like that or she. So there is a lot of information, 360 degrees of physical information to be able to master this realm, the physical, the, the uh, material plane. And there's another, which is the unseen world, which is 360 degrees of what people call esoteric knowledge or spiritual knowledge that you also need to know and master. And together, that's when you become a supreme being of 720 degrees because you've mastered the unseen world and you've mastered the seen world. So you're able to navigate through both worlds, knowing exactly what you're doing and what you're talking about. And, you know, and unfortunately, those who are still on the lesser mysteries or still haven't learned to raise their vibration, raise their consciousness. This is the whole point of why you're using more of your brain, because most people use, let's face it, less than 10% of their brain. So imagine if you were able to use the other 90. And so you're able to now, you know, reason at a very high level because your mind, we say your mind, but your mind is the, the communication device that links you from the esoteric or this other world, these other realms, to this world of the physical world. This is why you have to think first before you can do things in mm. the physical world. And you have to think first to bring things from these realms to manifest them here physically. So everything starts with, with your mind. And your mind has to be sound because, like you were saying, if you're reading these lesser books that are teaching you things like God is a burning bush or wrong information, there's a place called hell and you're going to go there and burn forever. Or there's like all these things that they give you mental problems in the sense of your mind is not correct. You're not, you're not, you're not reasoning correctly. And so when you come across someone who then ask you questions to, to see, does this make sense? Um, they say there's a thin line between love and hate, but there's a thin line between sanity and insanity. Mm -hmm. And what Wusabat does is it makes you, it, it, it gives you good mental health so you can think properly. And that thinking then should result in right actions because you're now, mm -hmm. you're now, because you have to think before you act and then you're acting properly, you see. So I know I gave you a long answer. Mm -hmm, that's um, fine, that's fine. But I hope, yeah, that's yeah, giving yeah. you an answer. Um, uh, another um, uh, question. Um, oh, um, how can we prove? I had this conversation yeah. uh, with somebody uh, uh, a while ago. How can we prove that the earth is older than the religious mind, than religious minded people think. Right. Because um, the reason why I asked that particular question is because um, uh, a sister stopped me on the street mm. and she asked me, uh, did you know that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Saviour? And I'm like, <laughs> me? Yeah. yeah. Yes, you and mm. and um, you know, and, and she was asking me various questions, and I asked you, hey, "Where are you from?" You know, and she said that she was from uh, Church of Shiloh, something or the other. Mm. Anyway, cut a long story short, I asked her, um, "How old is the planet Earth? How mm. old do you think the planet Earth is?" Mm. And she said, oh, it's uh, 6,000 years old. Mm. And I said, 6,000 years old? Yeah. And uh, she said, yes. And then, um, I'm trying to make it as brief as I can, but yeah. what, I, what I did, I explained to her how the planet that we're on now, mm. how it cannot possibly be um, um, 6,000 years old and God yeah. waved his hands and then all of a sudden there were birds flying yeah. around. That, and I actually explained to her and I asked her to look up into the sky 
And, and I said, what's that? And she said, the sun. Yeah. And I says, do you know how far away it is? And she said, no. I said, it's around 93 million miles. And I said, you're looking at the sun as it was um, around eight and a half minutes ago. Mm. So I asked her also, um, do you know what the Andromeda star constellation is? And she yeah. goes, oh, it's some stars in the sky. Mm. So um, I'm trying to make this brief, but what I said to her was, do you know how far mm. the Andromeda car star constellation is yeah. from Earth? And she said, no. And I said to her that um, it's commonly agreed that it's around two and a half million mm. light years away. And what that means is the distance from there to here, it would take light two and a half million years mm. to reach us. Now... If what you're saying is true, yeah. If what you're saying is true, um, we're looking at the Andromeda star constellation as it was two and a half million years ago. Mm. We shouldn't be able to see if God only created the Earth because it says in Genesis, yeah, yeah, and He point. made the stars also. Yeah. Well, the Andromeda star constellation is a group of stars. Mm. We know there's no doubt that it's two and a half million light years away. So how is it that... Well, I mean, that's the, an easy answer. Yeah, this is religious yeah. people, they, yeah. they, they follow a club, a belief, and they've been taught the same things and they've accepted it. Even when I, I went to Egypt and um, the guides over there, they, everything you ask them, how old is this? They will say 6,000 years old. And that's because the birth of the Europeans that are referred to as the Adamites only go back 6,000 years old. So whenever they're looking for findings of themselves, they only go back 6,000 years old. So obviously Jesus would be one of these Pleiadian beings that is passed off in the Bible as, you know, God and so forth. One minute he's the son of God, then the next time he's God, then he's sitting on the right-hand side of his, his father in heaven. And when you say, where is heaven? They say up there, but they don't know where. So it is really just a belief system and you have to be able to differentiate between believe in something and having facts because anthropologists, archaeologists, scientists, people who substantiate things by evidence won't say that. They won't say 6,000 years old because even in our book, um, you know, Fast Track, Your Spiritual and Conscious Journey on page 30, we give you, we give you all that the findings that have all been found in Africa and a lot of them go back to like 7 point, yeah, here you go, um, 7.1 million years old, which was found in 2002 AD. You know, you have, have a look at that yourself. You can just, you can read them if you yeah, want. But yeah. that just shows you that scientists have evidence of findings and um, they provide the evidence. So carbon dating, etc., etc. So DNA evidence, you know. So yeah, it's just a, it's a belief. And um, they will tell you, a belief, you can believe anything. You can say anything as long as you believe it and a, a, a group of people, just read out a few of those, a group of people that believe what you believe and that's it. Um, yeah, read, read out some of those. Um, uh, it's dated uh, 2.5 2 million years old, uh, discovered in 1924 AD, Australopithecus Africanus. Yep. Uh, and then uh, dated uh, 3.2 million years old in 1974 AD, um, Australopithecus afarensis. Yeah, they're not easy names These are to words that I've never seen because before. Because the founders of founders, yeah, and they, then, they use them. You know, it name. goes yeah. down here at the bottom. It says here at number six, 7.1 million years old, uh, discovered in 2002 AD, so Helanthropus chachadensis, chadensis, yeah. Yep. All found in Africa, it says. Right. Underneath, all found in Africa. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, mm -hmm. that's, yeah, I, 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 unfortunately, a belief system is based on religion, right? So this is called a birth of religion because some people in religion will find it hard to um, accept that religion was something concocted and it has a birth date. And when you look at the first man, they say Adam, in, they have a genealogy of everyone from Adam all the way down to, you know, the book of Revelations. 
a, a family line with, you know, even the book of Numbers. So he begot this and he begot that mm -hmm. and he begot that. So that only goes back to 4004 BC or B BCE, before the Christian era. And then you add another 2000 years to that, you come to 2000 AD, which was the end of the sun cycle as you know it and uh, the expiration of religion and these religious books. So that's why they always go back to 6,000 years old because they were really talking about the birth of the Adamites, which were really these, um, this graftation, as I said before, by the Pleiadians who made mankind in their image and their likeness, you see. So the, we have a book called Is There a God? Because when you start to read, it's a question. Is there a God? It's a question that one can ask themselves and the more you start to look into that question and who, what God is, etc., you will start to come to questions that don't make sense, that, you, that they don't give you answers for. And that's why we're here as, as, as um, Musbatu or Musabat or Sabians, Nuwapians. We're the teachers of the next 24,000 years. We're the supreme beings that are here to tell our story from our perspective and not really by other people telling you, you are this, you are that. Because remember, it says whatever Adam named something, that's what it became. So everything you've been taught is just based on, you know, what was what it was named. That's why when we say we're in Wapians, people are like, what's that? They, they've never heard of it. So we have to be the ones that like educate or give them the knowledge of, of what Wu Sabat is and what we're here to do. and. Yeah, that's it. Um, I think um, we're going to have to cut, you know, because okay. okay. person's waiting for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. So if you've got all right, one then. last one. All can... right, then. Um, all right, here's one. Um, did humans go to the moon in 1969? Absolutely not. Not, not in 1969. And again, when you do the research, we always encourage people, don't just take our word for it. Look at the other people. There are people, very smart people, scientists, people that will analyze everything. They will analyze the footage. They will, you know, investigate and come up with, nah, that doesn't make sense. Such as um, the gravity they say on the moon is different to the gravity over here. So then if you watch the footage of them shooting the footage of landing on the moon, the fact that the way the camera is even placed to be able to catch you from a particular angle doesn't make sense. They talk about, we can see stars all the way from here very brightly. And then when you see that footage, the stars can't even be seen and yet they're right next to the stars, pretty much. You see when, in terms of the gravity, when they're jumping, it's like they're hardly getting off the mm. ground. Mm. You see the sun and the shadow. Yeah, like if, you have, if you have an object here and you know the sun is over here, the shadow of that object will not be in, in a different mm -hmm. trajectory. Mm -hmm. There's so much evidence. And the people that were supposedly part of this have confessed to say it wasn't, it wasn't true. And, you know, some of them, they waited on, until they, they were on their dying bed to just say, look, I can't keep this lie or this secret anymore because now they think they're about to go and meet their creator. So <laughs> they might as well, you know, just tell the truth. Um, the master teacher taught us many years ago about this and he, he explained and he said, do you realise that there's a movie called Moonraker, right? The James Bond movie called Moonraker, where the same set that is in that film is the same set that was used on the footage of people landing on, on the moon. Wow. And I when you look that. at it, so, yeah, there's a lot of things mm. that when you do the research, you will find out. And it's like... You have to remember that to get money, to take money, taxpayers' money, the best way is to come up with a project of something like that. Oh, we're going to the moon. We're going to need billions and millions of pounds or dollars so that we can do this thing for humanity and for mankind. And, and that's a good way of um, being able to take money from the taxpayers. And they, they happily give it because they think, OK, this is something of benefit to mm. us, you know. So... You can just Google, research, YouTube, many people that have debunked the whole going to the, you know, going to the moon in night. Because they, oh, the other thing is the technology didn't exist to be able to remember that to launch 
out of the, at the Earth's atmosphere, you have many spheres, you know, um, ionosphere, stratosphere, etc. And the technology to be able to pierce through that was not available back then. So you couldn't have launched a rocket that will go past these spheres like that. So that again shows that it was impossible. And also, um, uh, as I understand it, that the uh, astronauts, so-called, couldn't have gone to the moon anyway mm. because of the activity in the Van Allen, Allen belt right. around the Earth. Mm -hmm. And it happened to be very intense at that particular time. So they would never have, yeah. you know, through the research I've done, they would never have survived that. It's just, it's like not. I said, when, when you don't know or have information, it's easy for someone to pull the wool over your eyes. But we're living in a day and time known as the information age. Um, we have the internet, we have, you know, so much information to our, to our disposal that, you know, you, you can't just tell somebody something these days and they're just going to believe you blindly because people have smartphones, you know, they, they can research, take pictures. Back then, there weren't the internet, there weren't pictures. Like now, something happens anywhere in the world, somebody's like with a mobile phone and it's shared across the globe in seconds. And it's now harder to, to lie and say it didn't happen and then, you know, create new things and then lie to the public, you know. Now it's very accessible in terms of information, you know. So yeah, definitely that, not in that day and time, they weren't able to do that. I really appreciate uh, your time and, and uh, it's been a pleasure. your answers and uh, they've been to the point and concise. I really appreciate that. And uh, all I can finish by saying yeah. is um, that um, I don't know of any um, religious leader, imam, um, uh, rabbi, pastor, cardinal, I've never heard any of them say, ask us anything. Mm. In Wusabat, you can come and ask anything. We're not necessarily saying we know every answer to every question, but if we don't, we'll find out for you or find out the answer from somebody that does. Absolutely. And there are so many student teachers at different levels. Um, and this is why when we teach, we say each one teach one because... I might miss a piece of the puzzle because I, I may not have been there when the master teacher was doing an oral communication about something that is not in the books and somebody else may have been. And I may not have a book that came out many years ago and somebody else does. So the information is amongst all of us. And this is why coming together, conversations, you've learned something today, mm -hmm. I've learned something today. Yeah. And this is why it's really good to have these conversations. And if you want to ask questions from anywhere in the world, you can video yourself three questions and just send them to us. You know, um, you can put them in um, osmvision.wetransfer.com. You can come, if you're local in the UK, come and have a conversation like the one we have done. It doesn't matter who you are. Um, you know, it's, it's about us all learning and growing together. Remember, we do the lives every Tuesday. There will be one tonight. So tune in and um, join our Telegram groups, join our WhatsApp groups. Just connect with us because, you know, it's something that we're all a part of and we share in this upliftment of humanity. All right. So until the next time, it's my pleasure. Speak to you again all soon, right. bro.